All right, real quick before we get this upload started, I just wanted to remind you guys that we got the new website for merchandise up and running. It's tolmanperformance.com. Now, somehow, I don't know how, I incorrectly spelled the name of the website down at the bottom of the screen on last week's video. Uh, the link was correct down in the description, and I'll have it linked again this time, but I don't know how I spelled my own last name incorrectly, but I did. The website is tolmanperformance.com. Let's get started. When I first started my YouTube channel, I had one truck, a 2000 Chevy Silverado 1500 that I called the ugly truck. It started out life with a 5.3 and a 4L60 automatic, but I have since swapped over to an 8.1 big block, a 4L80 automatic, and then on top of all that, I turbocharged it. In late 2020, I picked up another project rig, this time a 99, K2500 Big Block Suburban. I've done a few odds and ends, like swapped out the transfer case to a manual floor shift, I upgraded some parts on the interior, and then I swapped over to an 0411 LS-based PCM for more tuning options. But today, we have another project that we're about to unveil. So based on the thumbnail and the title of this video, I'm sure you already know exactly what's sitting right in front of me. But the question is, before we get to what it is and before I show it off, the question is, why did I pick a car and why a BMW of all things? Well, the answer is pretty simple, I guess. I mean, I've always had a soft spot for BMWs, and this will be the third BMW that's been in the family. First, we had an E90 that was just a, that was a 328, I believe, uh, just a simple four-door sedan. And then after that, right now, my wife drives an E70 X5. And I've always liked BMWs. For a used car, they just drive, I mean, amazingly. They're really tight. They handle so much better than some of the other equivalent cars you can get in the price range. And this one and most BMWs are front engine rear wheel drive. And just when it comes to a performance build, front engine rear wheel drive is really all the options that are out there. I mean, you can build a front wheel drive or rear engine and rear wheel drive. Those are usually really expensive. So front engine, rear wheel drive, sedan, it's got four doors, there's a back seat. So my little boy can sit back there and we can all have fun together. Uh, so why this particular BMW? Now this is an E39, which means it's just a mid-size uh, five series sedan. They made the E39 body style from the mid to late 90s to the early 2000s. They had a, a, a facelift somewhere in the middle there, I believe around 2000. So this is a 99, it's a pre-facelift car. Um, it's a three, uh, sorry, a 528i, which means the engine is a straight six 2.8 liter. It's the M52B28TU, which is a technical update version of the engine. So it's a little bit newer. This one has the double Vanos, I believe. So it's a dual overhead cam with independent variable cam timing on both the intake and the exhaust cam. Um, it's, I believe, like at 190 horsepower, something like that. It's definitely less than 200. So it's certainly not the fastest thing out there, but these BMWs, they're just so silky smooth. And this isn't just any 528i, this is actually a dining edition. You can kind of think of dining as you would in the same way as a Shelby or a Roush. You can buy a brand new car completely built from them um, with all the upgrades on it, or you can buy the accessories and add them on after the fact or have your dealer do it. And I believe that's what happened with this particular car. Now, because it is the 528, it's certainly not the highest end or the most valuable 5 Series. I mean, an M5, that's kind of like the top of the pile there. I'd love to have found an M5, but those are stupid expensive. Uh, after that, the one I actually really wanted, I really wanted to find a 540i with a six-speed manual transmission. But those, there just aren't a lot of them out there and certainly not in the price range. And if you'll remember, which again, I'll tell you in just a little bit, I actually wasn't even looking for another project car when I stumbled across this one. Um, but anyway, the dine-in edition, right now it's a 528. It's basically just the simplest five series car that you can get. And I believe the dealer added on just a few accessories that make this one stand out a little bit from its regular run of the mill five series cars. Uh, it does have the dine and cat back exhaust, which probably adds a little bit of horsepower, but more importantly, it looks cooler because it's stainless steel and it sounds a whole lot cooler too than just the regular old five series. <laughs> Uh, also, the suspension has been lowered down. I'm not sure if that's dining or if that's been done by another company, but the suspension is lowered down. It has some pretty cool wheels on it. These are original BMW wheels, and I believe they're called Style 5s. Um, they're actually made by BBS, if I'm not mistaken, um, and it's actually a legitimate two-piece wheel. These bolts right here, these actually hold the hoop of the wheel together to the face right there. Uh, so they're pretty lightweight. They're cool-looking wheels, I think. Uh, they're 17s. 
Um, let's see, the Dynan stuff also underneath the hood, it has a Dynan cold air intake and then it has a Dynan tune on the computer. Now all together, all those things, um, you could call them novelties. I mean, it probably adds maybe another 10 or 15 horsepower over a stock 528. Um, now if this were a Dynan M5 or a Dynan 540, and yeah, it'd be worth some big bucks. But this is just a regular Dynan Edition 5 Series, or they're just Dynan accessories on there. But still, to me, I couldn't pass it up for the price. Now, right now, this car does have 258,000 miles on it, which is up there. I mean, but these BMWs also, they seem to last a long time. And also, this one has been really well taken care of. I mean, if you look at the paint on it, yeah, I mean, it's got some, like, you know, wear on it. It does have the clear vinyl bra on it or whatever to help keep chips off the front of it. But overall, the body, it's really straight. There's no major dents or major damage. And notice some of the other cars that I looked at for sale. I mean, this is probably one of the nicer ones. I mean, forget about the mileage. I looked at a couple of 150,000 mile cars and the interiors on them were just wrecked. Uh, but even so, this one, like the seats work, everything pretty much on the inside works. It's, uh, oh, another thing my friend John told me, uh, this trim right here, I guess, is kind of a rare option. A lot of these have that almost orange wood grain color, but it has, I, I don't know what you call that, but it's almost like a metallic black trim on it. Uh, black interior, some of these kind of had a tan or a cream color, I guess. Um, it is an automatic, but the one cool thing about it, I believe that's actually a GM automatic transmission. It's a four-speed and I think they call it the 4L30. And I actually had no idea that they made a 4L30 transmission until I read about this one. But another cool thing about this car is it is independent rear suspension. It actually has 410, 411, I'm not sure. It has 410 or 411 gears in it because it has that four speed automatic. Um, so it does kind of get up and go a little bit for less than 200 horsepower. So overall, I mean, let's look at the big picture. We've got a front engine rear wheel drive sedan. It's got a six cylinder, it's automatic. We'll probably change that. Uh, it's got four tens in the back. It's black, has BBS wheels, and it's a dining, which may not be actually worth much in terms of dollar value or performance, but that just adds a couple of cool points in my book. So what are we going to do with this car? Because it has a lot of potential from a high performance standpoint. So probably one of the major things that I'm going to address at some point on this car is the engine. I mean, it's a perfect engine. It runs absolutely beautifully for having 258,000 miles on it, but it needs to have a whole lot more power. I love the chassis of this car, the E39. It's really well balanced. It's a really good handling car. I think they have the weight distribution right at 50-50, which means, I mean, it's just a perfectly balanced car and it handles amazingly, but we do need a whole lot more power. And I would like to have a manual transmission as well. So. The first thing that I thought of, which is probably the most logical thing that everybody would jump to, would be let's LS swap it. I mean, LS swap the world, right? That's what everybody's doing these days. You could pick up a 5.3 from a truck for a couple hundred dollars and you could put it in there with a big turbo and you could instantly have, you know, 500, 700, 900 horsepower and this thing would just be an absolute rocket ship. But I don't think that would be the right move for this particular car. It's just too nice of a car, in my opinion. Yes, it's an inexpensive car, but it's just too nice and perfectly balanced of a car to do that. I mean, like I said, 50-50 weight distribution is a BMW. There's typically a higher strung motor. They have higher RPM ranges. And uh, I don't know, like I said, I, I'm half tempted to LS swap it, but I'm probably not going to. So that leads me to what other options could I put under the hood? Uh, like I mentioned just a little bit earlier, one of the cars that I've wanted for a very long time, and maybe I'll still buy one someday, is a 540i. Now that would be the same E39 body style, but instead of a 2.8 or a 3 liter straight six, it's a 4.4 liter V8. And they made the 540i's with a six speed manual transmission. That's kind of like my holy grail car. I'd love to find one, you know, just kind of as is. But so why wouldn't I just swap in a 540? Well, Number one, to swap in the, um, I believe it's an M62 V8. To swap in the M62, you've got to completely change the subframe and the front suspension. Now that seems pretty drastic at first because like I said, they put the M62s in here from the factory, but evidently because of the shape of the oil pan of the V8 versus the inline sixes, they had to go from uh, these straight six cars use rack and pinion steering and the V8 cars use uh, just your traditional steering box. So. 
Um, basically, to swap the E, uh, um, sorry, the M62V8 under the hood, uh, you got to change a whole bunch of stuff, which means either you're buying a donor car or you're just buying parts left and right, or maybe you find a swap somewhere. And then there's all the coding. You've got to, you know, find somebody to help you code all the different modules in the car to communicate with, you know, the new V8 and the manual transmission. It's definitely a doable swap. But to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go through the effort of swapping in an engine that you could have bought just, you know, a car that already runs with the V8 in it. Now, like I said, I'll probably still do that. I still want to find a 540i six-speed manual transmission car. So um, if you have one for sale and if you're anywhere near Utah and you want, you know, not a crazy amount of money for it, let me know. Send me an email, tolmanperformance at gmail.com. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off track. So engine swaps. I didn't really want to do the M62 V8. Um, the next option I thought about would have been, I believe, the M54 3 liter straight six. Now, the reason why that was appealing is because it's a pretty bulletproof engine from what I understand and what I've read. But then again, that falls in the same category as, well, if I just would have bought a couple uh, year newer E39, it would have already had the M30 in it, or, I'm sorry, the M54 B30 TU in it. So uh, that really wasn't an option as well. It didn't make sense to go through the effort to swap something in that I just could have bought. So there is one engine in particular that I really kind of have fallen in love with since I bought this car and since I've started doing research. And I think it's the engine that I want to swap in. It wasn't in an E39, which means I'm not gonna be building something that already exists. It makes a lot more horsepower than this. It is still a straight six and it's made by BMW. I'm talking the S54 B32, that is the E46 M3 straight six. Now they're rated, I believe, 333 horsepower in the North American edition. They come with a six-speed manual uh, transmission or a six-speed SMG gearbox. I obviously would want to go with a six-speed manual transmission. And it's a close enough engine where I could probably get it to fit in here and wire up and get it controlled without doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. So even though I'm like really pumped and excited about starting this build, it's actually gonna have to wait just a little while. And I kind of mentioned a few times that I actually didn't buy this car for me originally. Uh, I'm kind of taking it over, but uh, the reason I bought this car is because we we have a family member locally who's in need of transportation. They're actually gonna be watching my son while I'm working, while my wife is working, and they need transportation to get from their house to our house just a couple of days a week. So uh, we figured we'd help out and provide transportation. Now, I was looking around at some inexpensive cars and, you know, you see Hondas and Toyotas and all kinds of stuff, but my wife actually found this car and I'm glad she did because it, like I've said a hundred times now already, it's such a cool car and I've kind of always wanted one. So it's going to be hard to let this one go, but uh, it'll just be a couple months. It's not like a long-term thing. And after it's all said and done, then we're going to get started on this build. Um, we've got plenty to do in the meantime. I've actually got, you know, ugly truck. We have some pretty big stuff in store for the engine build on that. Uh, that'll be another month or two away. We've got the Suburban. I've got that big block. I've got some changes I want to make on the rear end underneath. Um, see what else. We got the 84. I've just kind of been driving that. So this car, I don't mind waiting a little bit. That'll actually allow me to find the right drivetrain for it. Or who knows, maybe if I end up finding like a 540i six-speed, maybe I'll start building that one instead of this one. But who knows? Um, like I said, we've got plenty of time and I'm happy just to be able to find this car. And there are a few things that I am going to tweak on it just before we give it to the family member. You know, do an oil change, make sure the brakes are fine. Uh, just kind of do an overall once-over inspection, I guess you could say. Um, and I'll show you that in the next upload, actually. In terms of other stuff to look forward to on the channel, next week I actually have another customer build that's going to be dropped off. This guy's coming from Texas. He has a really cool uh, off-road vehicle and we're going to be doing a really cool engine swap under the hood. So uh, you LS guys will probably get a kick out of that one. Um, let's see, other than that, you guys know what to do on this video. Click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you back on the next upload. Thanks for watching.